here's just another demonstration of how we're transferring the pores. So this is a hose. Um, it's it's pinned at two ends, and as this spins, it pulls the two strings that are running through the hose, and then those two strings move joint move the finger joint up and down. So we're able to transfer the power from the circular motion of the servo. We're able to give it linear transfer through wires in order to get to to then convert it back to a rotational motion later. Now this is important. Most people stick the servos in the fingers, but you can't put big servos in fingers. Fingers are small. They wouldn't fit inside my knuckle. Some tiny little servo would not have the power I would want. I was able to discover that just lifting my finger, I can actually lift this five pound battery. Look at that. So that means my finger is generating like 50 pounds of force. So I'm gonna need some powerful servo motors most likely the MG996R Metal Gear Digit Torque servo should be good for that. It has 12 pound inches. That's pretty decent for a finger joint, I think. And then here I just got, without this wire, you can see how it would connect to the fingers. Without the wire though, you're going to have these things creating a lot of friction, rubbing on parts, cutting through stuff, um, getting frayed over time. I think the wire will preserve the string. I'm going to be using Coats extra strong upholstery thread. This stuff is incredibly strong. Ah, I mean, it, I'm cutting into myself. I'm pulling really hard. This does not break. It's 100% nylon. It doesn't get damaged with water. It's basically a plastic based thread. So I think it's perfect to transfer the force of my servos to the fingers. And once again, you can see here's the servos and they're transferring their force through this as they turn left and right it releases so if you were to turn it clockwise it would draw in this rightmost one if you were to turn it and it would also at the same time release the other one so these will work in opposing pairs like muscles when you turn it clockwise it's going to draw the string this way which will come up here it will bend the thumb down like that Okay, if you're to turn it counterclockwise, it'll draw this string in while releasing the thumb, and it will come, it will be able to come this way, because you, when you turn it counterclockwise, you're pulling this string that way, and it's, it's going to draw the string all the way up, through to here, and it's going to go like this. That's how this works, and it's really simple, and, and then you'll notice I keep plenty of slack in the hoses, so that if the, if the hand bends, it won't affect the length of this string. The only thing that can affect the length of the string is this handle moving. So that way, regardless of the flex of the hand, this joint won't move unless if I want it to move by sending the command for it to move to the motor. And then here you can see, I just drew little circles where each motor will need to be so I can get a motor count. I, I calculated about 27 motors for the hand, but that includes a couple motors for the bicep and it includes a motor to twist the forearm uh, to the forearm bones I realized our hand does not twist based on our wrist there is no twist here our the muscle that twists your hand is actually up in your forearm pulling the two bones running through your arms like this so it's actually turning the two bones inside the arm you can kinda see you can kind of see it, you can feel it on your own arm, you can feel the bones turning. And so that's why I have two bones here and you're going to need a motor to control the twisting of those bones in order to get the palm to face up or down and that's important. If you have a push up, you're standing up, you need the palms to face down. If you're catching something or, or scoop, scooping water, your hands face up, that's important important to have that motion. Then there's a whole bunch of tiny little bones in, in the wrist that I'm thinking of just implementing. I'm not exactly sure what they're for in our bodies, but I think I should just stick with it because the design of our bodies is really brilliant and they're capable of a lot. And if I want our, if I want my robot's body to be capable of what my body is, then I want to try to stick as true to it as I can. You can see here that we've got a lot of bones in the wrist. Scaphoid, lunate, trichium, pistiform, handmade, capitate, trapezium. We've got all these little bones, and so I'm thinking of just making those as well.